Good afternoon. Okay. Uh, this speech is again about nuclear energy. It's quite general, um, talking about the pros and cons, what nuclear energy is, um, slightly angled from a pro nuclear energy point of view, as I'll mention. Um, there, I mention a bit of the technical side of how it works, but I think for those who've had a little bit of research on nuclear energy, there shouldn't really be any elements or uh, items of vocabulary that should be too difficult. Okay. Good afternoon. It has been said that to be a good interpreter, you have to have curiosity. Um, if this was the only uh, the only thing that you needed, then I think I wouldn't be boasting too much to say that I must therefore be an excellent interpreter because I do tend to find everything I look at interesting to the point that I find it very difficult to focus and I'm easily distracted when trying to research things. This does mean, however, that I do find it quite easy to research speeches because I tend to find whatever I'm looking at very interesting and want to share all of it with my listeners and interpreters. So I hope I won't bore you too much with the uh, points I'm going to share on nuclear energy and what it is that I found quite fascinating and I was quite enthusiastic about sharing with you today. So what is nuclear energy? Well, first I should let you know that the information that I'm sharing today, although it might be familiar to many in the room at the moment, um, was taken from whatisnuclear.com, a website about nuclear energy. And from what I could see, it seemed very pro-nuclear energy, um, as we'll see from some of the points made. So basically, nuclear energy is obtaining energy from reactions that take place in atoms, the different substances. And there are two types of nuclear energy. There's that uh, that we get from nuclear fission. And nuclear fission is when an atom or the nucleus of an atom is split. So a large atom that has many um, protons and neutrons in its nucleus will be hit by a neutron, which will cause the atom to split and also release other neutrons, which will then go and cause a split in a chain reaction in other nearby atoms. The heat caused by this energy is harnessed and converted into energy, and that is the type of uh, nuclear power that, or the type of reaction that takes place in all commercial nuclear power plants. There's also nuclear fusion, and this is where smaller atoms such as hydrogen and helium are combined together, and this reaction again produces energy. Nuclear fusion looks very promising. It um, is seen to be safer and produce uh, less waste material than nuclear fission. However, there are problems to do with physics, to do with um, many other areas that would need to be solved before this could really be a viable source of power for us to use commercially. And there isn't really a timeline for when that might take place. So for now, according to the website I was looking at, societies will need to focus on other ways of solving some of the problems we still have in obtaining our energy. The next thing that I discovered after looking at what is nuclear energy was about how much energy we get per unit of fuel when we look at nuclear energy. And this boils down to a measure called the energy density, how much energy there is in a unit of mass for a given substance. I'm just going to share not the actual figure for the energy density of some different materials, but how long one kilogram of these materials would take to power a 100 watt light bulb. The first is wood. Wood is a common fuel. Perhaps if you've been camping, you've used it yourself. Um, apparently, a kilogram of wood would power our 100 watt light bulb for 1.2 days. 
A kilogram of coal would power the same light bulb for 3.8 days. Crude oil, another one of our common fuels, 4.8 days. And then we get on to some of our nuclear fuels. Natural uranium, so uranium that hasn't been enriched, would power the light bulb for 182 years. And reactor grade uranium, so uranium that has been enriched, would power our same little light bulb for 1,171 years. And there were a couple of other materials afterwards that uh, went up as high as 25 or 26,000 years. Now, if you're interested in what the difference between natural uranium and reactor grade uranium is, that's how much uranium is found in the material of the type or the, the isotope or the type that would cause the reaction that we're after. So apparently in natural uranium, there's 0.7% of this type of uranium in it, whereas there's 5% in the enriched uranium. So the website went on to talk about some of the pros and cons of nuclear energy. On the plus side, first of all, was that it was highlighted as sustainable. We've already seen how much energy you can get from such a small amount of uh, fuel. But also, there's the fact that there's still a lot of fuel left when the reaction is finished, when the spent fuel or the waste is taken out of the reactor and disposed of, apparently only 1% of the usable fuel in it has been used. There have been programs in the States, for example, there was a program to explore recycling uranium, putting that back into another reactor so we can get that extra energy out of it. This would have the plus side of making the waste radioactive for a much shorter time as well. However, that program was shut down because the recycled or the, the recycled fuel, one of the byproducts, if it gets into the wrong hands, can be used for nuclear weapons, as well as other economic reasons. Another option that could be explored is um, using a different type of fuel, because uranium is not the only um, fuel that can be used in the reactors. Thorium is another possibility. There were also ecological benefits cited. For example, there is no CO2 produced during the reactions that produce energy from a nuclear reactor. Obviously, there's some CO2 emissions from building a nuclear power plant or from mining the uranium, but apparently this is still 50 times less than coal and 25 times less than gas. The website also said that although there are ecological issues with nuclear waste, the waste products, the spent fuel, there are ways around this in that, as we mentioned already, recycling the fuel and also that if handled correctly, this can be stored safely, according to the website. Thirdly, this is said to be an independent or a, a source of independence where countries can have energy independence and not be addicted to, according to the words of the website, fossil fuels. The website also cited the fact that there are other applications that can be used from the reactions. For example, the heat doesn't just have to be turned into energy, it can be used for other benefits as well. However, although there were so many benefits cited on the website and although any negatives mentioned were quickly uh, counteracted with the positive options uh, that can be implemented, they did mention that there are some downsides to nuclear energy. Firstly, there's nuclear waste, which we have briefly mentioned. As I said, the website seemed to be saying, yes, we can do something about it. However, just to give you an idea of the scale, Nuclear waste stays radioactive and dangerous for hundreds of thousands of years. And while there are containment systems, it's 
under, put underwater and deep underground, when it first comes out of the reactor, if somebody were to stand near it unprotected, and they would die within seconds. Then there's obviously the cost. Apparently it's much cheaper to get the uranium once you've got a nuclear power plant set up, but it's so expensive to set up because you need so many extra safety measures, etc., that a lot of investors don't want to uh, put up the finances for it. And lastly, there are accidents. I was going to tell you a lot about the three main accidents that were cited, but we've heard about them in all of our previous speeches, so I won't go into the details. And just to say that because of these accidents and the chaos caused, the death, cancer, all sorts of um, things that came from it, the public is very wary of nuclear energy. And to conclude, I would like to say, I think rightly so. Although we see many benefits, it's clean in many ways and it can be safe in many ways, when the devastation caused, when something does go wrong, is so widespread and so great, and we cannot prove that we'll be able to make things safe for hundreds of thousands of years, I think we should stay away from it. Thank you.